completely up to you. Okay. So you will also need a separate tab open for we'll be playing a Kahoot game. So you'll need that tab open. And then I'm also going to share with you Google Classroom. So you'll have uh, need a tab open for that as well. So if you're on a tablet, maybe open up a couple tabs on the tablet, or maybe you could go to a computer, whatever is easiest for you, okay? I would love to see all faces. So if everyone could turn their cameras on, I would very much so enjoy that. If you're not comfortable with it, that's okay. I understand too. And the way that we'll participate in this class, you can type into the Zoom chat for any questions that I ask, or you can turn your microphones on and then you can just go ahead and speak that way, whichever you're most comfortable with, I would like you to do, okay? So this first class, it'll be introductory. So we'll introduce what the course is all about, what we typically like to discuss, what we go over, what the homework looks like, what the process is, and then we'll actually dive into our first book once we get all the introductory things out of the way too, okay? So let me go ahead and share my screen. And I also realize that some parents might be joining us to see what the course is all about. Please feel free to answer or ask any questions throughout the course of our session together. You can write into the chat, you could turn off uh, or turn on your microphone, and then I can answer anything as we go throughout the session. So more than happy to. So this is a literacy-based class for students in grades four or in grades five. And I typically like to do introductions of students or parents. Um, so that way I can get to know everyone a little bit better. So our introductions, if you'd like to participate in this, would just be your name, your preferred name. Sometimes the name on Zoom is a little bit different than the, your preferred name. A favorite trip that you've been on. And then your favorite subject in school, which it could be as my picture show, it could be music class, it could be art class, it could be gym class, it could be something reading and writing related. Completely up to you, okay? So I'll type this into the chat as well, and then I'll also model this. So your name, a favorite trip, and this can even be a trip to aunt and uncle's house, grandma and grandpa's house, wherever. Maybe there's a favorite grocery store you go to in your neighborhood. So name, favorite trip, and favorite subject. I'm going to share with you my version of this. So my name is Julie Banfer. You can call me Miss Banfer. You also see the name at the bottom of my screen here. And the favorite trip I've ever been to was to go to Indonesia with my family. My husband's family is originally from there. So it was nice to get to go back and meet some of his relatives for the first time when we went. And then my favorite subject in school was of course, reading class, English. Um, it, at first it was called reading within my school system, within elementary school. And then eventually when I got to middle school and high school, it was called English. So that's my favorite trip. That's my preferred name. And then that's also my favorite subject. So if anyone else would also like to participate, I would love to hear from you. If you're just joining in just to see what this course is about, that's okay too, but I'll give you a minute to respond. And if not, we can go ahead and move on. Okay, no problem at all. We will continue. So our course throughout the duration of this semester, we will read, discuss, and write about four different novels. We will practice reading out loud and we will also practice listening to reading. We will study the vocabulary from the books um, based on the content. We will write short responses based on some of the book discussions. Now this could be comprehension questions. This could be um, writing prompts. We'll have some type of written form every single session. We will watch short clips that can connect our novel to either the film version of it or different activities that happened within the real world. Like for example, the first book we'll be talking about is about Malala Yousafzai. So this is also, this is a biography. So there are some real world events that we'll be able to 
connect to as well. And then we also utilize all of these skills and put them together to create a project at the end of each book that we read. And these projects could be more creative based. They could be more written. I give it, I give you several different options. So that way you can choose what you'd like to do. And we will have multiple sessions. I can post this on Google Classroom at a later time so that we figure out how many sessions we'll have throughout the course of the semester, typically would be 12. So the four books that we will look at for the fourth and fifth graders for this fall semester would be, Who is Malala? We have a uh, Hank Zipser from, it was the first novel within a series. So if you like that one, then you can continue on with the rest of the series. My name is Brain Brian. And the last one is Indigo. So these are the four novels we'll be doing throughout the course of the next several months, okay? This is also posted on the Google Classroom link, so then that way you have everything as a reference point for later. Okay, I'm going to overview each of the four books so we have a little bit more information about them. And so then that way, if you would like to participate within this course, you can then find a way to find the ebook version of them, rent them from your library, buy them on Amazon, what have you, okay? So Malala Yousafzai was a girl who loved to learn but was told that girls would no longer be allowed to go to school. She wrote a blog that called attention to what was happening in her beautiful corner of Pakistan and realized that words can bring about change. She has continued to speak out for the right for all children to have an education. And in 2014, she actually won the Nobel Peace Prize. So this is just a little bit about her life. There is much more detail that we'll go into about the book. We'll go into different history. We'll talk about all different types of vocabulary in terms of just civil rights, equal rights, discrimination, and everything of that nature. The second book we'll be looking at is definitely different, not a biography. And this is a book that comes from a series. This is the first of the series, and it is the Hank Zipser series. This one is called Hank Zipser, Niagara Falls, or Does It? It also has a film version. So they adapted this into film, and it is a very funny. So this one's a little bit more comical. The first book we'll look at is a little bit more serious, talking about equal rights for education. This book is a little bit funnier in the sense that you get to see all of the wacky things that happens to this main character, and it is very relatable, and you get to see how he handles certain situations. You get to see characterization and different character relationships with this novel. Um, I thoroughly enjoy each time I've read this one. So inspired by the true life experiences of author Henry Winkler, the Hank Zipser series is about the high-spirited and funny adventures of a creative boy who thinks differently than others. The third book that we'll be looking at within this series is called My Name is Brain Brian. The description here is struggling with problems that the kids in his class see as clowning around, such as mixing things up and spelling letters backwards. Brian learns he has dyslexia and he suffers peer teasing when his friends do not understand. So this one will go more into character relationships in the sense of bullying and how to come back from bullying and how this character did that and how he struggled with a learning difference and how he persevered and used resiliency and everything of that nature. And the last book that we'll be looking at for this spring or for this fall semester is called Indigo by Alice Hoffman. This one is more fantasy based. So you can see like all four books are different. They're different genres. They have different themes. They have different types of main characters. So try to explore all of the different types of literature here. So 13 year old Martha Glimmer is convinced this is the worst time of her life. Her mother died. She grew seven inches and she has to put up with a woman who plays Martha's lonely father with food and opinions about how 13 year old girls should behave. Martha longs to leave Oak Grove and travel. Martha's best friend Trevor and his brother Eli also want to leave Oak Road. Nicknamed Trout and Eel because of the thin webbing between their fingers and toes, they long to see the ocean. They live in the middle of America, by the way. Together, Martha, Trout, and Eel are going to find the true meaning of home in very 
unexpected places. So this one is another interesting tale, really great characterization here as well, but it also dives into like some very deep themes of friendship and family and what that leads to the main character of Martha. So those are the four books that we'll be diving into for this semester, okay? So since I overviewed the entire session and what that looks like, let me just show you those four again. So here they are. And then I'll also, I'm about to show you the Google Classroom where all of this is posted as well, okay? So we have Who is Malala, Hang Zipster series, My Name is Brain Brian, and then Indigo. So we'll have four books, about three sessions per book, depending upon the book length and how, how much discussion we get from each one. But typically we'll have three sessions per book and you'll have homework for each session as well. And then typically homework would look, I'm about to show you, would look like this. So it'll all be on Google Classroom. Everything is here. So we have all of the books posted here on Google Classroom. We also have, it'll be posted here like, oh, here's a writing prompt. You will also have a weekly reading log, which looks like this, that I'll talk about in a little bit as well. So you'll always have some type of reading component and some type of writing component when you are completing any kind of homework for me for week to week. It'll be reading the assigned pages of our book of that, of that current session. And then it'll either be answering comprehension questions or it'll be answering a writing prompt and then also completing this weekly reading, weekly reading log as well, okay? So now that I've had this whole introduction, if you have any questions about what a typical session looks like, what we'll be doing, any questions about the books, anything like that, please feel free to go ahead and type into the chat because at this point we are past the introduction phase and I'm just going to go ahead and dive in here and get started on our first session. Okay. So again, I see a couple more people have joined us. If you want to write into the chat, any kind of questions, if you want to turn your mic on, turn your cameras on, please feel free. I would love to see more people's faces. It makes it a little bit easier versus talking to blank screens, but whatever works best for you. Okay. So now we're going to dive into the first session. So this first novel, Malala, we are going to have three sessions just discussing this first novel about Malala. But logistically, let me show you how we're going to answer all these questions, have our discussions, ask me any questions, anything like that. So we will be utilizing Google Classroom. So you can do this with any email address. And if you're having trouble logging on to this, just send me your email in the chat and then I can log it in for you. You can click this link or type in this code if you open up Google Classroom and then you can join our class. Parents can join the class if you're checking the class out. Students can join this class. So then that way everyone knows what's happening within our course. So we have the Zoom meeting that's posted here. All of the classwork will be posted. All of the homework will be posted. Everything will be here. If you have any questions, you can always like send me a message on here. You can always ask a message to the entire class. They leave a comment on an assignment, anything of the sort, boom, it's here. When you complete your homework assignments for me, this is where I'll also leave you feedback. So I'll ask you thinking questions. I'll be editing some written work. I'll be giving you suggestions for next time we write together. Sometimes we'll have paragraphs that you have to submit. Or once we get down to the end of the semester, we'll have multiple paragraphs that you'll have to submit at one time. So then I'll give you feedback on what to fix for the following class. So this will be like our portal for how we communicate with everything, OK? And then any kind of references or resources, or if we go over a graphic organizer, or we go over different types of conjunctions, and I have a poster for you, all of that will be up here as well, okay? So this is the code, this is the link. I've shared it within the Zoom chat. So please feel free to join if you'd like to continue on this course journey with us. And if not, and you're just 
seeing what this class is all about and you're a parent and you just wanna take a little peek, that's fine, no problem at all. A typical agenda of what we will go through. Um, well, I'm going to preview this novel in particular. We'll discuss some pre-reading questions together so that I can have a little bit better idea of like some background information that you have about this novel. We'll look at some, then after that, we'll look at some background information together so you have a little bit more context before we start reading. We will have a quick Kahoot game, which is like an interactive quiz if you've never done it before. And then we're actually going to go ahead and start reading chapter one. And I will start reading it for you so you can listen to a fluent reader read. And if you'd also like to participate and listen to it as well, by all, by all means, you can participate and you can also read after I do as well. Okay, so there's Google Classroom. The codes are in the chat. Let me know if you need anything. Now to give you a little bit more background information about who this biography is about. I have a quick clip that I'm going to show you and let me just fix my speakers so that you can hear it. Activist who stood up to the Taliban, survived an assassination attempt and became the youngest person ever to win a Nobel Peace Prize. Malala Yousafzai was born on July 12, 1997, in the Swat region of Pakistan, to Zayuddin and Torp Kai Yousafzai. Her parents were determined to give her every opportunity a son would have, starting with an education. But then in 2007, when Malala was around 10 years old, her home, the Swat Valley, one of Pakistan's most beautiful regions, was taken over by the Taliban. Life under the Taliban was difficult, and women were discouraged from getting an education and even shopping at the local market. Malala's father, an educator who ran a number of private schools for girls, attempted to educate girls under the radar. Malala herself developed a stealthy route to school to avoid being caught. Eventually, the Taliban officially banned girls from going to school altogether. In January 2009, the precocious 12-year-old Malala started blogging for the BBC, under the pen name Gul Makai, chronicling her life under the Taliban regime. Her writing was deep and thoughtful and beyond the years of an average seventh grader. The New York Times made a short documentary about her and she publicly campaigned for girls to go to school, winning Pakistan's first National Youth Peace Prize. But this put Malala in the limelight, sparking the Taliban to target her. And on October 9th, 2012, Malala boarded the bus home from school. She had just finished a physics exam and was busy thinking about her Pakistani studies exam the next day when a masked gunman boarded the bus, asked for Malala by name, and shot her in the head, neck, and shoulder. She was just 15 years old. The bus driver rushed her straight to the hospital. She was in trouble. They airlifted her to a hospital in Peshawar where they found the bullet was very close to her brain. It was causing her brain to swell and they needed to get her to a more advanced hospital or she would die. The ruling family of the United Arab Emirates offered their private jet, which rushed her to a hospital in the UK. Meanwhile, the Taliban released a statement proudly proclaiming responsibility for shooting the girl who was promoting Western ideas in SWAT. She arrived in the UK in critical condition and woke up a full week later. Her survival empowered her to continue her mission to expand education and promote peace. She started the Malala Charity Fund to help build schools. In 2013, she spoke at the UN. She went on to win the World Children's Prize. And in 2014, at 17, she won the Nobel Peace Prize. But even more impressive, after all she endured, Malala has never expressed anger or vengeance or any promotion of violence. Of her attacker, she says only that she believes he made a great mistake. His goal was to silence her. But after enduring the shooting, she had no more fear. And she certainly had a lot more to say. Okay, so quite the character that we have here um, for our first novel. And since this is a biography, this means it's all true. So this really did happen to her. She really did show resiliency. She's standing up for what she believes in. She thinks everyone should have an education, especially females who weren't entitled to the education originally. So this will be a really interesting first book into. 
Okay. So I have some pre-reading questions for you. Now, if you've already joined our Google Classroom, this will be part of your homework for the first week. I'm also going to, I just typed them into the Google chat. Now I know some of you here are parents, some of you here are students, but if you would like to participate, I'd love to hear from you for at least one of the questions. And you can write into the chat, you can unmute yourself. These are just pre-reading questions just to see what you already know about this topic. So the first question is, what is a biography? What is an activist? Question three is, have you ever heard of a group called the Taliban, other than the video I was just showing? And if so, what have you heard? Four, what would you do if a terrorist group didn't allow you to do something that you wanted to do? And five, does everyone have a right to an education? Why or why not? So these are all of the questions that we'll be discussing throughout the course of, of the next few sessions when we're looking at this novel. And then also, it's nice to hear your perspective, your ideas. So if you'd like to answer any of these questions, please feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself or type into the chat. And I'd love for everyone to participate, even if you're a parent or a student. And if you're not comfortable right now too, that's, that's okay, I understand. I'll give you a minute to think. And it's just to see what you already know. Joshua, would you feel comfortable answering one of these questions? If not, and you want to skip, that's okay too. I know it's our first session together. I have no idea. Okay, no problem. It's just to see what you already know. Thank you for letting me know. I appreciate it. And Melody, would you like to share? Or are you just chiming in to see, tuning in to see what the course is like? Hi, Julie. <laughs> Yeah, my, my son Logan is trying to see, but he, he actually is a, a grade two. <laughs> We're just taking a peek for the higher lessons. Oh, yes. So I'll be with the grade twos um, the next hour. Okay, great. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Yep. No problem. So this, this hour right now is geared for fourth and fifth, and then next hour will be second and third, more, more so geared towards. But you're welcome to sit in and to keep investigating what this fourth and fifth session is like. Okay, so I have all of these questions posted within a Google Classroom. They are right here, the pre-reading questions. And this is what they look like on the document as well. Now there's a couple different ways that you can respond to this when you are completing your homework. You can go ahead and just write right into this document. A, B, A, A biography is. You can print this and handwrite it and take a photo of it and then post it on here if that's what you'd want to do. Or another thing you can do is if you click tools, you can do voice typing. And then you can actually dictate and so talk into the document and then that way it can type for you. Whatever you're most comfortable with, a couple of different options for how you're completing any kind of work for me, okay? And let me know if you have any questions about that. There's so many different add-ons and extensions that Google Docs has as well that are really helpful tools for all types of learners. Okay. So next up, I'm going to go into a short background about the location that Malala lived in, her, the people that are terrorists within her region, how she was fighting against them, a little bit more context so that it can help us with our novel, and then also help us in terms of like our understanding of vocabulary as well. We'll be discussing different comprehension questions every session that we're together. So this will also help us as well once we understand more information about the background. So this main character, she is originally from Pakistan and Pakistan is divided into four provinces, each with its own individual police force. She was in the Swat district, which is a valley 
and it's also an administrative district in Pakistan. And it's located in like this upper valley. Here's a picture of what it looks like. Really beautiful location. So this is within the Middle East also of our country or of our world, I'm sorry. So in this region, as you've noticed from the video, many people are Muslim, about 97% of the people that are within this region. And the other tiny portion of this population are Christians. Hindus are members of other religions. So as you noticed, Malala wears certain things over her head. That's part of her religion. We'll talk about that a little bit more too. It is a pretty large country. It's the sixth most populous country and it's the 36th largest in the entire world. It also has the seventh largest armed forces. So like their military base, which is pretty huge <laughs> considering. Their government it works a little bit differently than ours. So it was an independent nation at first and then it became an Islamic Republic. And then there was a crazy civil war, similar to how we had a civil war here in the United States. And today they have the president or the head of state that is the head of the government. But there's still different groups within Pakistan that is essentially forming its own military. So it's trying to make its own rules. One of these groups is called the Taliban. So whenever there's different types of conflicts, a bunch of people get together that have common beliefs. In this case, they call themselves the Taliban. And so this country in particular is really struggling with these groups that come together that just want to form their own government and make their own rules. In this case in particular, they are interpreting the law in their own way. And that's why they're being super strict towards different groups of people such as women receiving an education, which is allowed, but be with their strict rules, they don't want to allow it. So they are unfortunately not being fair to every single person living within this country, and they are being a little bit biased towards certain groups, such as women and children, which we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And just some background about Islam. It is a type of religion. And it is actually the one of the largest religions in the entire world. And this is a, a huge gathering of people praying right here. And they are heavily, heavily reliant upon prayer. They pray multiple times a day. And the people that who practice Islam are called Muslims, which Malala is one herself. Okay. Now, I've given you a little bit of background information. Let's see if you can also complete a short quiz to see what you've remembered from what I just spoke about, and then also some different background information about what you might already have. So if you'd like to participate in this quiz, you can go to, and I'm typing it into the chat, kahoot.it. Once you go to this website, it is an interactive quiz website. So a whole different screen will come up. And we will look at some vocabulary terms and some themes here. And then you'll have to type in a code in order to join this quiz, which let me show you what this looks like. So once you go to kahoot.it, you will type in this code. It is 534-6807. Now you get to pick a username and this interactive quiz will show your scores and your answers on the screen. So if your username, you want it to be some other name of something that isn't your actual name or an emoji or something silly, that's okay too if you want to remain a little bit more anonymous. Now, some students don't want to have their names or scores up on the screen at all, so they just type into the Zoom chat the different answers to this interactive quiz. That's okay, too. If you're just a parent joining in and you just want to take a look at what this is all about, totally fine. You can just take a peek at it as well. Completely up to you.
okay? So if we have members that join, they'll pop up right here. And then we can go ahead and get started with the quiz. And I think we're just going to have Joshua with this session. So it'll just be introductory. So Joshua, do what you can. This is just to find out background information, knowledge that you already have in combination with what we've been talking about the past couple of slides, okay? Okay, background info. So you can see a little bit more about what this is about. So there'll be eight questions. What do you think Malala makes speeches the most about? Education for girls. Oh, that was a quick answer. So then as you can see, the name pops up and you actually, you get points for a correct answer and then you get even more points for how quickly that you've answered this. It seems like Joshua maybe has played Kahoot before. <laughs> you seem like you know what you're doing here, right? Okay, let's see question number two. Where is she from? England, Manchester, Afghanistan, or Pakistan? Whoa, fast as well. Good, Joshua. Nice job. Okay, question three. What bad people came into Pakistan and started to shut down schools for girls? Awesome. Fast responses. My goodness, it's like lightning. And then you can see like they'll have students with different streaks and you'll have like different scores that'll pop up. And again, you don't have to put your name for future reference. You can put any name. And when we have multiple Hi. students playing, then you won't know who's who. Yeah. Hi, Julie. Sorry to uh -huh. interrupt. Being in the game okay. team. Oh, yes. Did you want to participate? Uh, yes, I have it open. Oh, OK. Yeah. Let me go ahead and. It is. I'll type it into the chat. It's also at the bottom of my screen here. Okay. Five, three, four, six, eight, zero, seven. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. And then I'll see if it can have you join mid game. I think it should normally let you. Yeah, you can join mid game. You can? Okay, perfect. Thank you, Joshua. I appreciate it. So what important award did Malala win? Yes, we talked about the Nobel Peace Prize. Excellent. Okay, let's see the next question. What do you think Malala thinks is the best type of weapon? A gun, a pen in your voice, a sword, or a bomb? Now this one might be a little bit trickier because it's trying to use some context clues here. Ah, we have some different answers here. So you will soon find out Malala thinks the best weapon is a pen and her voice because she does not do anything violent at all. Not even kill a fly if it's in the room, believe it or not. Okay, great. Oh, and we have Logan here. Yay. Sorry if I started too quickly for you. This is just a practice one too, and we'll have more in the future. What do you think first made Malala famous? She was acting in a movie. She was writing and speaking about education for girls. She was a NASCAR racer, <laughs> or she was a pop singer. I made this question a little bit easier for you all <laughs> since the last question was a little bit trickier. Awesome. There we go. There's Logan, nice job. Okay, two more questions. What is Malala's religion? Is she Christian, Jewish, Hindu, or is she Islam and practices, practices Islam and is Muslim? Okay, Do you yeah, remember? That is hard. <laughs> yeah, this one is a little bit trickier. Yep, there you go. She practices Islam and she is Muslim. Mm -hmm. And she'll talk about that a little bit in the book too and how that has impacted her life. Awesome. Oh, and we have another person to join too. Yay. Welcome, Matt. Okay. Does Malala think that you can change the world? What do you think she would think? We don't know enough about her yet, but you can take your best guess. Yes. I love it. Awesome. 
So you will come to find out as we go into her biography, she is super positive. She believes everyone can make a change. Everyone has an impact. And you'll get to find out a little bit more about that as we dive into this biography. So great job, crew. So this is Kahoot, if you've never played one before. Interactive quiz. You can make any username that you want. It can be an emoji, a picture, anything like that. It gives you points based on correct answer and also based upon how fast you're answering a question. So here is the... Well, apparently you can spam click before the question shows and then you get a thousand points. You could randomly click, it, but you're risking potentially getting the answer wrong as well. Good point, Joshua. Yeah, I've seen students do that before. I've also seen on Zoom students log into multiple screens <laughs> on it before to try to try to get the best score possible. So I've I've seen it all the past couple of years as we've all been learning on Zoom, right? Okay. So here's what we're going to do next. And I know we just had another friend join us. So we're just introducing our course and we're just going through. I'm also going to share quickly just for this other friend for Google Classroom. If you'd like to join our Google Classroom and find everything out that we've been doing, this is the link. There's also the code listed there for you. Everything that we work on will be posted within Google Classroom. Let me go to the mainstream. These are the four books we'll be working on for this session. I have all the homework posted here. You are also entitled to two 30 minute one on one sessions with me throughout the course of this semester. So this could be a parent teacher conference. This could be just meeting with a student to focus on certain skills. This that could be both. It could be a you know, a mix of a session where we're just dis I'm discussing with a parent or a guardian and then I work with a student. So throughout the course of our semester, you are entitled to two of these different sessions. So you can schedule them back to back. I just have a one hour session. You can schedule them at the beginning of the semester, at the end of the semester, whatever suits you best. And this is the link to my calendar there. So then that way you can try to find a day that I'm typically available. I teach normally on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. So my typical availability is Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you can take a peek there to book anything that you'd like to through the Google Classroom site. You can leave me like little questions, comments, things like that. I'll leave you feedback on this, on your written work, on your all of your reading log activities, everything like that will be all through Google Classroom. That's the best way to contact me. And then it gives me a notification for everything that's there, okay? So we were focusing on our book. Our first book we were diving into is all about Malala. It's a biography for our first novel. So I'm just catching everyone up to where we were. Okay. We went into some background information about Malala and where she grew up. And now we're going to actually just, we're gonna start diving in. But before we do that, if you're sticking with us and you're going to stick with us for our, and this date is actually incorrect. If you're sticking with us for the course of the semester and you're continuing on, then this is what your homework would look like. So we would have you read chapters one through four. I would have you finish the pre-reading questions that we discussed earlier. And then to also focus on your reading log, which let me show you that now. This is posted on Google Classroom as well as your pre-reading questions on Google Classroom. That's both part of your homework in addition to reading the first four chapters. So this weekly reading log. So I have, if you keep scrolling, I have this same template and it's just repeated. If you'd like to fill out this reading log digitally, you can just go ahead and type into this document. If you'd like to fill it out by hand, you can go ahead and print this out, go ahead and write into it, and then just upload a photo of it. So just take a photo on your tablet, take a photo on your computer, on your cell phone, and then you're just uploading a photo of this week to week, whatever is easier for you, okay? Now, if you're reading a book independently, great, write that title down. If you're reading a book for school, great, write that title down. 
if you're reading the book for me, great, <laughs> write that title down. Anytime you're reading independently, I would love for you to put it on this weekly reading log so that I can track how much you're reading. So let's say this is the week of, maybe you want to start on Fridays, or maybe you want to start every Monday, you'll start reading for the week. Maybe you want to start every Sunday, whichever day you'd want to, you would just let me know this is the week of blank. And then let's say we were fill filling it out for today. Maybe you already started reading Who is Malala tonight. Ideally, I'd like you to read four to five times per week for about 20 to 30 minutes each session at least. If you're reading much more than that, awesome, great. But I'd like that to be the minimum. And I have that posted on your Google Classroom as well. If you go scroll down and click on the reading log instructions, I have four to five times per week, about 20 to 30 minutes. The other part to this, and whatever, let's say you read for 45 minutes, is did I talk with a family member or friend about what I've read? And you might be thinking, well, why would I be doing that? So the goal here, which you can also just highlight this, check the box off, whatever works best for you. The more you discuss literature, the more it builds your comprehension, the more you have the opportunity to utilize the language within the book that you're reading and helps build your vocabulary. And it also helps you connect to that novel as well. And the more you discuss with things, it also helps you understand other people's perspectives and putting yourself in their shoes. And it just really, really helps deepen that comprehension of what you've already read. So that way, when you continue reading, you have all this extra background knowledge within your brain as you continue reading this novel that you've been reading, okay? So if you can't get a chance to talk to a family member or friend about what you've read every single time, that's okay. It's totally fine. Do what you can, but ideally, I'd love for you to read four to five times per week, about 20 to 30 minutes, which isn't too, not too long, especially if you're just reading the book for me, that should be about the minimum what you're reading anyway. Okay, let me clear this out. And then the other piece of homework were, were these pre-reading questions that we were talking about earlier. And again, you can print this out, you can handwrite and take a photo, you can write right into the document or you can click tools, voice typing, and you can actually speak into it if that's easier for you. And the best way to edit your written work is most definitely to read it back to yourself out loud. You might feel a little bit silly reading it back to yourself out loud because you're just speaking to, to no one within the room but that's when you really catch grammatical mistakes and little things here or there when you listen to it read out loud, which this um, in the tools, if you click the voice typing, this also does text to speech. So you can also have it read to you through the Google Docs as well. If you ever need me to show you how to do that, like you just let me know what's best for you and your learning preference. There's so many amazing tools and add-ons within Google Docs, okay? So that's what typical homework would look like for the first session. Next session, we're actually going with the fourth and fifth graders. We'll be diving into some writing. And so we'll go through the writing process and what that looks like. I'll model how I brainstorm. I'll model how I write topic sentences and detail sentences so that you have a better idea of my expectations too, okay? Okay, so now before we end our session tonight, and since this is an introductory session, I'm ending a little bit early. So then that way I can leave room for questions, comments, concerns, chatting one-on-ones. And then in the beginning of the next hour, we'll be doing the second and third grade session. So this is still the fourth and fifth grade session, okay? So I'm going to have you all listen to me start to read the beginning of the book so that you can hear a fluent reader read. Ideally, once everyone has all of their novels, then everyone could then take their novel out and open up to the same page as me and follow along. So then that way they can see the words that I'm reading on those pages as well, okay? So I'll just read the first few pages, maybe about five minutes, and then I'll leave the last 10 minutes of the session to just ask any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that. And then we can go over that then, okay? So I will start off on the first page. 
who is Malala Yousafzai. And the first chapter is called, Who is Malala? When Malala Yousafzai was a little girl in Mangora, Pakistan, she decided to be a doctor when she grew up. She knew that she would have to go to school for many, many years and study very, very hard, but Malala didn't mind it at all. She loved everything about school. She loved reading, she loved history, she loved geography and science. She loved studying religion too. She enjoyed writing and reading stories aloud to all of her classmates. And if you'll notice in the book as well, I have a bunch of notes on my book, but they have really great pictures in this book as well, especially maps. They also have really great timelines in the back too that we'll discuss next session as well. And again, rent this from the library, e-reader, purchase it on Amazon, whatever is easier for you, okay? When her teacher talked about something new at school, she could not wait to learn more. Tests were difficult, but they were fun too, especially when she had studied hard and knew the answers. Then when Malala was 10 years old, her life changed. War came to Mangora, the city where she lived. A group of violent fighters called the Taliban had taken over her beloved Swat Valley. They were saying that girls would soon be stopped from going to school. Not boys, just girls. The Taliban started destroying some of the school buildings and the Pakistan army stopped them. Mangora just eventually became a war zone and it was very dangerous. People were afraid to go out of their houses. Milano wondered how she could ever become a doctor if she wasn't allowed to learn. She wished there was something she could do to help keep her school open. Many were closed and few students even dared to go to the ones that were open, but Malala still wanted to go to school every single day. Malala spoke out. She told her, her local newspapers that she was afraid the Taliban would close her school. And she talked about how frightening her life had become. She said that more than anything, she just wanted to go to school. Imagine not being able to do something so that seems so basic for us, but for her, it was a, a privilege that was being taken away and something that she really loved to do. So she was definitely deeply hurt by this. Malala was becoming famous because she was speaking out and people were talking about her. Some Taliban fighters learned of her name and they wanted to take revenge on her so that she would stop speaking out. I'm going to pause there. This is page four. If you're going to stick around with us and continue reading, that's where I'm pausing so you can continue for the next session. And I'm going to stop my screen share. I told you I would stop a few minutes early. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything of that nature, and I can always go back to previous slides in my slideshow. I know that some of you came in a few minutes late, so I can show you any more information if you might need it. And if you'd like to stick around for the next session, starting at the beginning of the next hour, that's geared more for second and third graders. So please stick around for that. And if not, then that is the end of our first session together. And if you are leaving us, I hope that you have a fabulous evening. And if you're sticking around, by all means, feel free to do so. What if we don't have the book? Ah, yes. So I posted all of the novels on um, the Google Classroom. Let me go back to the site. And since this was just the first introductory session, I wasn't expecting you to have anything today. So these are the four novels that we'll be looking at together with the fourth and fifth grade class. Now you can go to your school library and you can check them out there. You can go to your local library in your town and check them out there. So those are both free versions. Or you can purchase them on Amazon or Kindle or Audible or Learning Ally or any kind of e-reader website. 
it's completely up to you and it depends on how you read best. Maybe you read best when you are listening to it and you have an e-reader. Maybe you need that physical copy of the book, but your school library and your local library should have these versions. Um, they're pretty popular <laughs> for students within these age ranges. So, and if you can't find anything, and if your school library and your local library doesn't have them, they are very affordable on Amazon. You can also buy them used on Amazon for a few dollars here and there. So it's nothing too, too crazy expensive. Okay. Thank you, Grace. Have a nice weekend as well. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Julie. Bye. See Thank you. Soon. you. Bye. Take care. Mm -hmm. I see it's probably recording.